<laughs> Hello again, I'm Bob Weir with another interview of People in the News in North Texas. My guest today is Abby Germer, City Director of Refuge for Women, a nonprofit faith based organization providing specialized long term care for women who have escaped human trafficking or sexual exploitation. Thanks for being here. Yes, absolutely. If you would please begin by telling our viewers something about your background. Okay, well, um, as, as you mentioned, my name is Abby Germer and I do work with Refuge for Women. Um, and how I got involved in this organization was uh, back in 2009, um, I just felt that there was a leading for me to go to Mumbai, India and go do a service project over there. Um, so my husband and I went on a mission trip and that is when I originally learned about human trafficking. Um, I had never even really heard the term before, but I started to learn and understand as I feel most people do and still do is that that happens in third world countries. Um, not necessarily that happens here in the United States. And so for several years I made um, several trips back and forth working with an organization over there and then they did some outreach. And so that is what started my journey. And I personally um, have been married for 18 years. And we have two daughters, a 17-year-old and a 13-year-old. And I think having a filter of having my own children and own, you know, young teenage girls that are vulnerable to this type of... Um, yeah, this, this, this type of uh, horrible activity that's yeah. going on, it's amazing how much of this goes on in our country. Right, right. right. So you so this is actually a red light district in Mumbai. Yes, sir. India. Yes. So the place that I would go visit was called Kamani Pura, and it, the organization I was with had a church that was down um, on the outside of the red light district, and so they have services there on Saturday nights, and so we would go down to those church services on Saturday night, work alongside of the women who would come from the brothels to go to church, and then they would leave and actually go back. Mm -hmm. But this organization had a massive outreach, and what they would do is build relationships with these women, and then they had a facility over there that they would then help them escape you know, from the red light district and then take them out to a place of healing. And that's where I started to see, like, man, we can do something like this, the long-term healing part. Right of this, you know, in the U.S., so. Abby, what is the uh, age range for these victims? Um, the average age range for uh, uh, somebody entering a lifestyle of sexual exploitation is um, the statistics out there say between 12 and 14. Mm -hmm. um, and so they really do pry after the vulnerabilities of that, I mean, I remember when I was that age, I definitely struggled a lot with my self-confidence, and so that is what these um, groomers and these traffickers are looking for. And they, they do prey upon the young and, and, and the uh, naive, uh, and, and so much of it is, is people, uh, young girls being taken off the street, right. I mean, actually grabbed off the street, right. and thrown into a car. And, uh, yes. Uh, are all the victims female? Um, all the victims that we serve in our particular program are female, um, but all victims of sex trafficking and exploitation are not female. Um, there are more and more cases that are coming out today that it, bo it involves both um, girls and boys that, are, um, that can be victims of trafficking. So what are, are the goals of Refuge for Women? Uh, well, what, what do you uh, anticipate will be the end result after a, a woman comes to you? Right. So um, one of the things that our organization does is this, the clients that we serve are 18 and older, and as I mentioned, they are female. Um, but most of them were trafficked or abused as a minor, and they just happened to age out of the system to where when they come into us, um, you know, they are not considered a minor anymore, but they have levels and years of trauma on top of that. So our biggest goal at Refuge for Women is to provide a long-term healing home for our residents to come and stay in so they can work through the effects and the trauma that they have experienced as a result to being exploited. And how do these uh, women escape? the bondage, um, do they do it on their own or, or is it, uh, is it a, a raid on a, a place and then they, 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 they are free and then they look for an organization like yours? Yeah, I mean it happens all different ways, um, kind of some lingo and um, 
for different organizations that work in this industry is that there are what we call frontline ministries. And so they are ministries that will go out into the clubs or call um, ads that they'll find come across online or do outreach at different hotels and start to build relationship with women where they think that there are some high trafficking areas. They'll go into jails, they'll help law enforcement identify victims of trafficking because a lot of times these women are the ones that are catching the charges but they are not they are victims of control and manipulation and so a lot of there's organizations that go into the jail they'll work with law enforcement um, you know and there's just all this collaboration that takes place one of the things I love about this cause is that everyone can kind of stay in their lane and get good at what they do and then we all have to work together so we partner with frontline ministries all over the United States and then whenever they can do the outreach and they find a girl who they need to place in a long-term program they then contact us and then we're able to get her into one of our houses across the US and I suppose the the women that um, that you come across uh, having lived the this life are they are psychologically mm -hmm. um, indoctrinated or yes. brainwashed yes and um, there is something that's called a trauma bond and so that is part of what is formed out of the manipulation and the coercion that comes from a trafficker and so oftentimes these um, these men or you know and a trafficker isn't necessarily always a male there are female traffickers as well um, but they will spend years developing a relationship in what we call a grooming process and build um, just build that love connection with these vulnerable populations and then all of a sudden it's like one thing leads to another and then they're just you know sucked out into the lifestyle and before they know it there's they've, they've reached a point of no return um, there's so much abuse domestic violence um, and just things that they hold them against their will that way that they really truly are in bondage I understand that you also provide safe houses for women where counseling yes, is uh, given to them. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what uh, Do you employ professional counselors? We do. So um, we have safe houses all over the United States. So we have a house in Vegas, Chicago, Kentucky, and Ohio, and then in the North Texas area here. Um, we're actually in the process of opening a home outside of Houston, which we call our Gulf Coast location, and then in Southern California. Um, but each program, um, I always say each location runs the exact same program. And so we have what we call our phases of progression and they have to do these, this many books during you know months one through three and so on and so forth. And part of our program requirements is that each location does have to have a licensed professional counselor that meets with our residents both on an individual basis and do group counseling once a week and then um, the level of therapy that they receive um, goes anything from the cognitive behavioral therapy to EMDR and just really are trying to get the best that we can. And the goal is, is to uh, take uh, these women who have been through this type of lifestyle and transition them back into a Correct. normal life. Again, yes. Where they'll have a, uh, they'll have a chance for uh, employment and right. the future and stuff yes. like that. Yeah, it's very important to, for, for them to be able to make that transition because that's mm -hmm. got to be, and, and, and it depends on how long they've yes. been uh, uh, captured by these uh, these terrible people. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything, uh, we're going to wrap up pretty soon, sure it's how fast this goes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, tell, tell us the uh, website. Uh, Yes, absolutely. So if you would like to find out more information, you can just look us up on the web. It's um, www.refugeforwomen.org. That'll take you to our main website, and then you can go and check out where our other locations are located here. Um, we're here in North Texas. Um, if you would love to get involved, um, please go ahead and look us up online and send us your information, and we would love for you to be part of the solution here. So. And that website and other information is in the written uh, portion of the article as well. Oh, so uh, uh, they'll be uh, able to contact you. Um, well, I guess uh, uh, we're going to wrap up now. So, uh, Abby, I just want to thank you for being here. Yes, thank right? you. And, and sincerely thank you for... Mm -hmm. uh, for well, being involved in something that uh, gives people hope yeah. uh, in, in what sometimes seems like a really cruel world. It is. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you pleasure. for having me. Thank, thank you, you. And thank you for watching.